After you've accomplished the first step of the pricing process and uploaded your MLS data search, what you'll find is there's a number of things that are created automatically for you. And those really are the neighborhood patterns. Now these patterns need to be explained right now so that you can understand how to use them later down the line. So these are made automatically for you. So let's go over how to understand the odds of selling, the time to sell or close graph, understanding the buying pattern, what the takeaways from each of these are, and when you'll actually use them. Now if you look at the pricing process checklist, you'll notice that it's not actually listed here as you know, the next step is understanding the patterns. The reason why is you'll use them later. So let's go into each one of them and then explain why you're gonna use them later. So jump into our program right where we left off before. We've uploaded our data, and the first thing that pops up automatically is the real estate reviews. Now, in many cases, you'll use the review to get to this point, so we're gonna step past that. We're gonna click the button right here, it says patterns, and open up our pattern graph. So let me zoom out here so you can see the graph a little better. So this here is the odds of selling graph. Now this odds of selling graph really shows you the, the activity and the chances that a home or a listing will sell. So in this case, the blue column here represents homes that have sold. The orange under contract and the red did not sell. Now in this top one, you'll see there's no actual active properties for sale. But the green here down the bottom at the summary of 2020 activity shows four for sale, so they will look green if they do show up. Now in this graph, you can see that this is the last 12 months. This is 2021, this is 2020, as this search was done on February 1st. Now you can see underneath each of these as well has basically the absorption rate pricing. Homes are selling at 2.1 per month with zero months of inventory. And you can read through the rest of these, etc. Now, each of these graphs are answering a key customer question. This, this key customer question that this graph answers is, what are the odds my home will sell? As you know, not every home that goes in the market does sell. So what are the chances you will sell? You'll see in this area, 96% odds of selling is awesome. Now, whenever the odds are in your favor, that's always a very positive thing. But in many cases, you can do this for a lot of different areas. You can do it for citywide. And the average we tend to see is really a lot lower. It's a little bit below 50%. So if you're over that 50%, you're in a good shape. If you're at 90%, you are you know, through the moon happy, because this is a great odds of selling. Next two, you'll see by clicking on the tabs here at the bottom, are the 2020 and 2021 time to sell. Now we, inc we include both because sometimes when it comes to different times of the year, you wanna look at, you know, the, the previous years as opposed to this year's. Imagine right now in February, looking at the 2021 time to sell in, in 2022 wouldn't make sense. So in this case, we have 2021 and 2020. As we get a little bit later, maybe we're only five months in, but now we have the 2022 time to sell in 2021 because we want to look at the full year as opposed to just the six months. So you'll always find two of them right here. Now each of these have blue dots to, rec to represent homes that have sold, and then a red line here that represents the average days before closed. You can see how it can change from year to year. You can change how the price range changes as well. So this area, um, you can see, has two very different looking graphs for this based on the year. Now, the important thing about this is it's, it's days to close. So what you can really think about is it's from when you're on the market to when it closes. So knowing that you can actually foresee kind of like when you're gonna sell if you've listed today. And that helps you with the next graph, which is the buying pattern. Now each of these buying patterns, you can see how they change between 2020 and 2021. As you can imagine, 2020 is lower than 2021. Uh, you can see that each of these columns represent the number of homes that have sold in that month. Now the blue columns that are shaded right here are the most active window for this area. Now, if we're thinking about pricing a home and we see that last year, it looks like February to June was the busiest time, and we're thinking it's 45 days from that average time to close last year, then we could rightfully predict that as we do the search on February 1st, we would probably close middle of March if someone put an offer in right away, which according to all the data looks like it'd be probably you know, expected almost. That does help us plan and future plan ahead of if they're moving to a new home, you wanna be able to look at that and know that right off the bat. So the buying pattern and all these other neighborhood patterns are great and there's really key takeaways for when was the best time to sell my house, how long should it take, and what are the odds I do sell. And these are great things for your customer to know, to look at, and to understand. Now, that's the main key takeaways.
But what you will be using them for is later on in competitive positioning because they also show you the desirability of that neighborhood and the odds of selling and whether or not you're at the right timing of the market to get the most value. The combination of the time to sell and the buying pattern, if you are in this window, you do have a little bit of a price bump. So what that means is that helps us with a competitive positioning standpoint later on. So we will come back to these to look at these to help you position the home correctly for sale. But understanding these now is really a, a key thing so that you can start addressing um, the thoughts you're gonna have for your customer and the recommendations based on when they're ready to move or what they're thinking as far as future planning goes. And that's really the second step of the uh, pricing process, even though it's not on the pricing process checklist, because you wanna start having this in mind to start thinking about the discussion as we get to the next step, which is finding the value of the home based on recent sales.